Drama at NDDC public hearing as acting MD of the commission feigns and in Ondo State, four APC governorship aspirants step down and declare support for Governor Akere Dolu. This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you for joining us on the program. The House of Representatives Committee on Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, resumed its investigative hearing on the alleged financial irresponsibility at the commission. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Godswi Lakbabu, appeared before the committee, defending his actions as regards the commission. The acting managing director of the agency, Professor Daniel Ponde, also appeared before the committee but was rushed out when he fainted. It is also worthy of mention that the chairman of the House Committee probing alleged corruption at the NDDC, Honorable Tunji Ojo, stepped down. Joining us for a conversation on these developments, we have Benjamin Kalu, uh, the spokesman for the House of Representatives, join us via Zoom. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me and viewers. Thank you for tuning in. We also have uh, Mr. Chris Wokobia, political analyst. Pleasure to have you join us as well. It's my pleasure to be on with you. Okay, we start with you, uh, Mr. Kalu. Uh, some revelations were made again today. Uh, what were some of the takeaways from the appearance of uh, Senator Godswi Lokbabu for the committee? That is not in charge. He doesn't know what is happening in that agency. Most of the questions, he evaded them because he didn't have the, the answers to the questions, especially with regards to procurement and whether or not the ministry, the ministry, should play the role that's supposed to be reserved for the CEO or the MD of the agency. There's a little bit of conflict there. The job that's supposed to be done by the procurement procuring agency is being done by the supervising agency. So All that's right. a, a lot of uh, mixed up with regards to information. He's not even aware that the uh, BPP, the DG of uh, Bureau of Public uh, Procurement, was with us recently and uh, declared the certificate of uh, no objection issued to them uh, in nullity because. Uh, they were issued on the grounds that uh, they, were, they were misled. He claimed they were misled because it was hinged on a budget of 2020 that is non-existent. And right. you know, you cannot go and procure uh, without declaring the source of the fund and where it will come from. In All this right. case, the 2020 budget of the NDDC has not been approved by the House. So a lot of, a lot of issues came up and... Uh, uh, we saw complexities here and there. Um, and uh, All right. um, let's get Mr. Uh, uh, report will say. Uh, uh, All right, let's also get uh, Mr. Wokobia's uh, perspective on the presentation done today. Let's start from there as well. Mr. Wokobia. No, I didn't get you. Can you I hear me? I didn't get you. No, I'm also asking for your uh, perception. Do you agree with Mr. Kalu that uh, some, I mean, the senator did not uh, represent well, doesn't seem to be in charge? No, I think that um, there's a mix up somewhere here because um, the act, the law providing for the NDDC does not explicitly uh, give authority to the minister to, I think that what the minister has done with respect to the NDDC, it's overreach himself. And um, it's interesting that uh, the spokesperson of the House is on this uh, conversation with us. The truth is that um, there is a lot of mess. The, the NDDC stinks and um, the supervising minister, if you like, uh, of, the, of the Niger Delta ministry, hasn't done well with respect to how 
the NDDC has been functioning. I think that he has overreached himself with respect to the NDDC. And I do sincerely think that uh, it is beautiful that we're going through this in our, in the, in our country because um, sadly and unfortunately, as you and I talk, uh, the present government got to power mounting and humming anti-corruption. Unfortunately, just about every parastatal of the presidency and just about every arm of the presidency stinks. I, I want to say that um, I did see the, the sitting today uh, with respect to the investigation uh, regarding the NDDC. And I want to say that three things were very evident. The members of the House of Representatives were ready to, to do justice to the investigation. But very unfortunately, I think that at the level of the executive, the interim MD and the minister of the Niger Delta, they, they, do, they, they obviously came very unprepared, if you like, or the, the messiness, if you like, of the ministry and the NDDC was too much for them to handle. I, I do sincerely think that at some point in human evolution and human voyage, that geist, the spirit of the time, comes to, to hunt those who play with the destiny of a people and indeed a country. All right. In, in the interest of time, let's, let, let, let's take on some other issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of that, I'll, I'll come back to you, Mr. Kalu, but let's stay with uh, Mr. Wokobia for a moment. In a country with sit tight syndrome among politicians, were you surprised by Honorable um, Olubumi Tunji Ojo's decision to recuse himself from today's proceedings? Like I said uh, a few minutes ago, I, I think that the House of Representatives came prepared. And uh, I want to believe and I want to pray that uh, the Ninth Assembly would extricate uh, itself from the so-called rubber stamp phenomenon that we, we, we thought it was going to be uh, last year. I just pray that they will rise to the ante, they will decide to do what is right, proper and tried. When Ojo recused himself, I, I was very happy. And... I, at, at some point, I said, perhaps uh, mother fate is beginning to drive the Nigerian ve vehicle to such a point where uh, those who represent the people understand the full details of oversighting the actions of the executive. They have oversight functions. And I pray that they continue like this because this country needs some kind of redemption. All right, Let, let's go back to... Like this because if nothing is done now, the fulminating cataclysms around every space of this country will continue until something gives. All right, let's go back to uh, Mr. Kalu. Still with that question, uh, many would think that um, the Honorable recusing himself uh, would be for the entire probe, but we understand um, that it is just for today's sitting. What is the thinking behind this? Yes, the thinking behind it, you know, we wanted to show Nigerians that this is not all about ourselves. This is about getting the job done, and it doesn't have to do with the chairman. The house is bigger than the chairman, and um, uh, the committee is bigger than the chairman. Though there is no petition before the National Assembly, in all fairness, there is no petition. The allegation, they were just, you know, concocted stories to, you know, distract people. It was a strategic move to distract people from the softness so that will, they will keep you busy with, oh, they are stealing money in National Assembly, and that is why they don't want us to do forensic auditing. When we consulted, some of us were against him recusing himself somewhere for him recusing himself. But he said, you know what? I want to prove to Nigerians that I don't have anything to hide. If they have anything on me, let them throw it up. Let me leave there to make them feel free. And when we asked the um, gentleman, both the MD and the minister, now this um, man has recused himself. What is it that you have against him? Absolutely nothing. 
they, he was saying, no, it's about a project that took place in his constituency. This project may have been there from the previous member who was in the house because the gentleman in question only joined the National Assembly in June of last year. And the, the project they are referring to uh, pre-existed, you know, he's coming to, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to National Assembly. So uh, this, we, are, we found out that the, the minister was just uh, trying to distract people. And he was saying, you know, the forensic causing thing is going on. It is going on. We asked him, where is it going on? There was no answer. Do you have permission for it to go on? No answer. Have you gotten FEC approval for it to go on? No answer. Actually, what the FEC approved was for the consultant, that, uh, the lead consultant, who is not himself a forensic auditor. He, the work, the mandate of this consultant is to, super, is to hire other consultants or other um, forensic auditors and supervise the activities. Now you tell me, how can the person who is not a forensic auditor supervise forensic auditing? Now you tell me, how, how, where is it possible that the money that you have given to a lead consultant is far lower compared to the amount you have profited, you gave out for communication to Nigerians about the um, uh, forensic auditing. Let me give you an example. Do you know that they paid a company known as Clearpoint uh, the sum of 641 million you know, to communicate to people about forensic auditing, that it is coming up? This is 14 times more than the amount that they paid uh, a forensic consultant. And this forensic consultant, the approval only came 29th of June. Now, if he came 29th of June, and you say you've hired nine, consult, nine auditors between 29th of June and now, who have they interviewed? Who is relating with them? Nobody. Where are they sitting? Nobody. So I put it, you know, to, I, I tried to ask him severally, personally, I asked him severally. You know, you have not been able to satisfy this committee that forensic auditing uh, is going on. There is no okay. forensic auditing going on anywhere because the budget for the forensic auditing has not been passed as we speak because the old budget ended 31st of May of, um, you know, two months ago. So okay. this budget needs to be passed for you to have where you can leverage you know, the funding of that particular forensic auditing. It's just a mere okay. distraction and distraction all the way. I, I would just, um, on a light note, I, I would say that the committee wouldn't then um, countenance the comment from the senator that since the uh, chairman has recused himself, that the whole investigation should commence afresh. Uh, we'll just move on to Mr. Chris. No, no. <laughs> we'll move on to Mr. Chris and just um, uh, ask, one would have expected things would begin to go smoothly after uh, the chairman stepped down uh, for today, but that wasn't the case. Uh, the acting NDDC boss uh, slumped during hearing. What is your quick comment on the emergency help that he got uh, after he fronted, especially with the COVID-19 fears and your whole assessment of the setting? Let me say, Prestissimo, that what, what I saw um, appeared like a drama. Um, did he slump? Did he convulse? Did he faint? These are questions that uh, the medical uh, experts will tell us maybe in the next few days. But what is important to note is that the stench, the ear twinging, so wrenching, ear tingling information that came out from the, the investigation today is enough for Nigerians to begin to ask for, and I say this without fear of querulous critics, for the resignation of the, the minister of the Niger Delta. It's enough for Nigerians to ask for that interim man management committee to be disbanded because clearly, and um, I'm, I'm in sync with what uh, the representative of the House of Representatives just said. Clearly, you have figures about monies that have been spent but not appropriated for. That's an offense. That's criminal. And then you are talking about the forensic. I heard the senator talking about the forensic. When the Auditor General of the Federal Republic of Nigeria hasn't even recommended... Uh, forensic auditors 
to the NDDC. So there's a whole lot. It's a gamut of misinformation. It's a gamut of corruption. It stinks to high heavens. And I think that the time has come for all those who truly care about this country to begin to speak up. I will side with the National Assembly, like I said, if they have reason to stand with the masses of this country and indeed the nation. This kind of malfeasance and corruption must be stemmed at the at the at, at the roots. We Hi. must begin to think about what Generation Ness says of this country. Uh, Every uh, part of our nation. Look at the EFCC. Look at the NDDC. Look at the Minister of of, of, of Justice and Attorney General. Look at all kinds of terrible um, uh, Tommy Rots and allegations hanging over this government from all angles. Well, at least the there is some effort to try to and clean up the system. And uh, fight this. Mr. Wokobia, at least there, I mean, this ongoing effort is to try and clean up the, uh, the system. But, uh, on that, I ask you, Mr. Kalu, can you speak on the senator's comments that most of the contracts in but the end. We pray it's not swept under the carpet. We pray it's, nobody sweeps it under the carpet. Certainly, certainly. Um, I, I guess that's the whole point of the investigation. So, part of the comments and the revelation made today uh, by um, Senator Pabio was that most of the contracts in the NDDC was given out to members of the National Assembly. I'd like you to speak on this, Mr. Kalu. Like I've always said, uh, their strategy is to take the eyes of the public from the issues, either to focus it on frivolities, technicalities, or unfounded accusations. We raised the question and I said, you gave 60% of whatever project that you have, whatever budget that you have to National Assembly. How? Where? Can you identify any of them? There's no answer to that. And remember, he had already mentioned that 50% of the budget was used for the most important aspect of the budget now, uh, of, uh, of our life, or the life of the people of the, of the region, which was health. In fact, he said health took 50%. So you gave health 50%, right? Okay. You gave National Assembly 60%, right? So the budget, you need 120% of the budget then. Hello, so, Mr. Callum. So... So if you percent of your budget on health, if you spend 50% of your budget on health and you spend 60% uh, of your budget on the National Assembly, it means that you have more than 100%. So uh, it, it, what happens to recurrence?